Today's the first in a new series of videos for the channel that I'm calling Directors Club. And this is going to be about live performances, but also rehearsing, running choirs, ensembles, classroom music, bands, all that kind of thing. I've got five of my favourite apps ready to show you, so let's go. Hey guys, I'm Ant and this is EdTech Music, where we look at how technology can help teachers deliver curriculum music with more engagement and fun. Today we're looking at apps to support band and choir leaders and performance in general. There are timestamps for these throughout, so let's get on. Okay, so what features matter? Well, we're looking for tools that help us work more effectively live, making rehearsal and performance easier and less stressful. So we're looking for ones that have transport controls for play, pause, rewind, even record maybe, and jump around in the track. We're looking for those that work on multiple devices, such as on our iPad or our iPhone, or move the songs between them. We're looking for those that might have subscriptions to make track downloading easier, and those that let us upload and record our own tracks. We're looking for those that let us organise our own backing tracks into playlists or folders to make rehearsal and performance easier. We're thinking about repeating, looping, turning on layers, labelling sections, maybe having remote control features, and I'm thinking that lots of the tools that we're going to discuss may have really good application outside of just running choirs, bands or classroom music making. So let me know in the comments what you think, if there's anything I've missed, any that do a better job, and I'll make sure when I pick up the following videos where we review each separately, I try and cover that stuff too. Okay, so we're first going to think about the music tool that comes built into your device, which for me is Apple Music, but you might be Google Play Music. Equally, you might have a Spotify account or something like that. Now, these are great because the music can be organized really easy into folders and a library of playlists and albums. And we're really used to that already, so that makes life dead simple. You can set up playlists for performances, different playlists for rehearsing if you need to, and it's all very familiar to us and easy to use. You can add your own tracks, which is the case of all three I've mentioned so far, but you can also have subscriptions that you pay on a monthly basis where you can download and stream those tracks as part of your subscription. Equally, if you wanted to edit a track, then you could buy it through the actual store and then you can edit that track afterwards. You've also got the option for additional app integrations that let you set up remote control to start and stop tracks and convenient features like that. And because it's built into the operating system of the device, you can swipe in and have really quick access to those controls, unlike third-party apps that aren't quite so easy to get to if you haven't got them open already. Now, next on my list is Audio Share. Now, I really like Audio Share because it's a very versatile app. It lets you not only organize your tracks into folders, but also rename them, therefore making ordering really simple. You can upload tracks from other cloud providers like Dropbox and things like that. And when you click on a track, you then have simple transport controls that let you move forwards or backwards, play and pause, and a really nice wavetable display of the track that lets you click anywhere and scrub back and forth to find the place you need, which is really handy, special in room rehearsing. Now, thinking about sources of tracks, there's a couple I want to share with you as well. The first of them is piano tracks. And I love piano tracks because it's exactly what it says on the tin. I've used it for a lot of years. You can purchase and stream or download tracks that are piano accompaniments, but you can also, for most of them, access the vocal version as well that has the accompaniment but with a vocal line that helps support when practicing. Now that's dead useful, but what's even more useful is the ability to change the pitch and the tempo of the track as well. So I've put a link to them in the description below. Now when we go back to Audio Share, there's a few other things you need to know as well. You can upload your own tracks from Dropbox or something like that, but you can also do other interesting things such as add notes as well as tracks to folders. So you can therefore put notes between songs to remind you about things to rehearse or also to organise whether in performance maybe you have gaps or things you need to do between tracks to set up different equipment or different readings or things like that that could be really helpful because you can use the app to help you sequence those things live. Additionally, Audio Share I think is great for recording. So you can plug in an external microphone or you can use the device microphone and you can then record straight into any folder in the app. 
and then name that track. This is really handy for taking rehearsal recordings or recording live performances because it's a device you probably have in your pocket already. And once you've got those recordings, you can edit them like any other track. Now, in terms of the editing tools you have, you can crop so you can take away part of the beginning and part of the end of the track as much as you need to to get rid of the bits that aren't necessary. You also have simple fade in and fade out tools as well, which is just a really nice touch built into an app like this. Next, we're going to take a look at GarageBand, which actually I found to be a really good app for practicing with choirs and bands. And one of the reasons is it's tight integration with Apple operating system as well. So I can use it on my iPhone here, or I can use it on my iPad as well. And the view is pretty similar, although a slightly bigger space on the iPad. Now, when I make a new song, I can then add in my backing track or rehearsal track that I've already got. And you can see I get this block layout, much like other tools like this that let me scroll back and forward to navigate the track or I've got the play controls on top including record so I can add my own layers. Now this is great because it makes it really visual for me while I'm rehearsing and I can have this on the music stand at the front with me or if I'm working with an individual or using the piano to note bash then I can have it on the piano and it's just a really comfortable way to work with the tracks. You might be able to see that the tracks that are audio tracks or recordings have tiny wavetable representation on them as well, the little swells and dips where the track gets louder and quieter. And that, again, really helps me to navigate it and look for the start of verses or choruses or parts of the song as I'm rehearsing. And because GarageBand is a full digital audio workstation or DAW, I can work with not just tracks that already exist, I can also play in and record in MIDI format and I can play in live audio from a microphone as well, which is a really great way to combine all of those different things. Now, because I can build up those different layers, that means at the time of rehearsing or in advance, I can play in and prepare those different audio band parts and then I can use them live to rehearse, but then mute them as my group get more accomplished and I no longer need them to the point where in performance I may just have the actual track on its own. And equally, if the track is missing something, like some percussion to build dynamics at a certain place, I can play those in and add them myself and add them to what is heard. When you look closely, you'll see actually that the transport control is really nice and simple and uncluttered and actually for rehearsal purposes is really clean and easy to use. Now, this is also a great way to create rehearsal material because when I've added each of those parts in, I can then mute and unmute different ones. So I could share one version that has maybe the soprano line and then mute that and unmute the alto and share that part to another group of singers so that they can take it away and use it to rehearse for themselves. Something else I can do is add a blank track, and this is really handy, add a blank track and then label parts of that track and that gives me a named bar that I can use to scroll through and find different sections of the song really quickly. I've also used this as a solution when I have a sore throat and I can't really model the singing that day or if I want to just stand back and listen and I can use the tracks themselves to support the singers or the players as we go through the rehearsal. Now the downside of an app like this is that for each song, you're not really playing a track in a playlist, you're making a separate song project file. And that makes getting in and out of each song a little bit clunky and not a great solution for live because you want something where you can just move very quickly between the tracks without having to really do anything. Uh, especially if you're the person maneuvering the tracks as well as standing at the front waving your arms. So I wouldn't recommend it for live, but for rehearsal actually it's a great solution. Now, in terms of that digital audio workstation approach, there's a couple of others that I just think are worth mentioning to you. Now, the first one is BandLab. So if you go to edu.bandlab.com, then you can open an education version of BandLab, which is a free account as well. And that filters later into tools like Cakewalk that let you work with the same files. So it's a really good solution that also has mobile and browser-based apps as well, which is, is another great way to work with different types of sound files. The second one, which is a similar deal, is Soundtrap. So again, at Soundtrap.com, you can do a very similar thing where you can work with the browser and the mobile app to do very similar things that you can do in GarageBand. So if you're not on iOS, then the, one of those two might be your best solution. 
The next track I want to share with you is utterly brilliant and fairly unique, and that is Stage Looper. Now, Stage Looper describes itself as backing track assistant for live performers, and that's more or less what it does. It lets you organize the parts of a track and mark sections within it and then jump between them. But rather than jumping in a clunky way, it plays the rest of the current section and then jumps to the start of the section that you've next said you want to play. This is brilliant in a learning setting because it's really good for rehearsal, it means you can loop something over and over to get really good at it. But it also means that I've used this for things like assemblies as well as rehearsals because you can have it play maybe the introduction over and over while you talk or while you model call and echo or body percussion or all sorts of rhythm games and things like that. And then you can jump straight into the different sections that will start without you having to trigger them right at the right time. You can just hit jump to verse one and at the end of the current, say, intro, it'll jump to verse one and you've got yourself ready for what you want to do during verse one while it's doing that. So it's a really versatile tool, quite unique and does something that can be really, really powerful in creating engagement with learners in a music setting. The example track I'm using here is from Karaoke Version. And if I take you to that site here, you can see it does a very similar thing to piano tracks, but with band versions, synthetic versions, as well as just piano. And this is great because it equally has an enormous library of tracks that are easily searchable by category or by keyword or by title and author. And it also lets you then purchase them to stream or to download and use as you see fit, just like you've seen me do in Stage Looper here. So I've put a link to karaoke version in the description below as well. And last but not least to share with you is VLC. Now VLC Media Player on the desktop is a really fantastic app. It's described as the Swiss army knife of media players. So you can play different video formats, different audio formats. You can stream live online content. You can do all sorts of things with it. And the mobile device does very similar things. You can also set up playlists and put tracks in order that way. And because it can just play pretty much any type of file, it's a really good app to have on your device that means that whatever you download, whatever you come across kind of out in the wild, you know that at least you've got this app that is probably going to be able to open it if anything can. Something else that's a real bonus with VLC is the number of remote control apps available. So you could have your iPad or maybe your, your MacBook or laptop plugged into your PA system with the playlist on the desktop version of VLC. And then from your phone or iPad, you could remote control to that device over Wi-Fi to control when the tracks play, which again, is just a really nice touch that just adds a little bit of extra functionality. I'll go into that in a lot more detail when I cover VLC as a separate video. Okay, so that's my quick rundown on how those five different apps can really help in a live and a rehearsal setting. Now, I'll put the links to piano tracks and karaoke versions, as well as all of the app sites in the description down below. So please help yourself to those. Do let me know in the comments what's been useful about this, if I've missed out any obvious features, or if you think there's an app that is kind of more useful or, or more deserving for live and rehearsal performances, then please let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to pick it up in the next one of these. Stand by for a separate video on each of these apps in more detail and to go through how to use them. Hope you've got value from this video. Please like and subscribe so that you get the next one automatically. See you again.